if you are new here, welcome. Uh, I have some new finds that I would love to share with you. All glass beads. Um, I also have a few new creations that I would like to share as well. Um, so first off, let's look at this necklace. Uh, I actually covered this in my last video. I went over satin glass. So if you guys would love to learn about vintage and antique glass and jewelry, please check that out. I also have a playlist with several other videos. I go over different types of glass beads and put that all in a playlist for you guys to check out. And I had this necklace and the extender uh, needed, needed to be replaced. It, well, it had one bead left. So I added some check beads that look just like the one that was on there. I just didn't have any that matched exactly. And this is satin glass. Well, specifically, it's called Mother of Pearl glass. You can see here it has just a glow to them, almost like a moon glow look. And they do actually feel like shell. I don't know if you can hear that. It just has such a different feel than just regular glass. And I I love, love these beads. I'm obsessed with them right now. Um, yeah, here's one. You can really see the sheen. And they're all cut at an angle. They're really unique and I still haven't figured out where exactly they were made because uh, Murano glass makers made this type of glass, so did Czech, uh, and uh, another country made this glass, I, f I forget off the top of my head, but I just wanted to share that I repaired that, and if anybody is interested in it, it is available, you, you can just email me, and I'll let you know if any of these are not. <laughs> Uh, some of these are going to be in my collection, but for the most part, they will be for sale. Um, and then I have this lovely West German glass beaded necklace. These iridescent, like, oil slick beads were pretty popular uh, in the mid-century with the Western German glass. And... These twist shape beads are really, really cool. I really like those. So that was another find. And that one is also available. Now, this one, I knew, I knew what the beads were right away. I have to be very careful with this. Um, I already chipped one of them accidentally, but these are Venetian or Murano pinched glass beads. They have adventuring uh, swirled in there. These like light blue swirls or cobalt blue and white on this very light robin blue uh, color. And it, this is just beautiful. I. I knew I had to have this when I, I found this. They're, they're becoming really hard to find. And I think it's because most people don't know how to describe these beads. I've heard, I've heard someone say they look like chewed gum. Um, just, you know, very, and I've heard other vague terms used to describe these, but they are pinched, I guess is the only term I have found. Um, and that is exactly how they're made. They're made with little tongs. And as the glass is 
you know, still in the molten state. They use tongs to pinch, you know, just these little fluted shapes all around the bead and it takes a long time to make and not to mention all the different colors within it and then also how fragile these beads are. I have another one very very fragile and it has millifiori uh, canes and within the glass. So I saw this class you've already seen it but um, I thought, well, that's really unusual clasp, like very ornate, got these topaz cl colored rhinestones, filigree, um, and it, it's Mark Miriam Haskell. Now, when I bought this, uh, the person didn't mention Miriam Haskell. They did not, I did not even see the back of the clasp. I just saw the front. And of course the rest of it and I thought oh those are beautiful but now that it has a name on it and her stuff's very collectible especially this with Venetian glass I I don't know I couldn't find anything like it I have no idea what it would be worth um, maybe some of you Miriam Haskell fans would know I don't I'm not super familiar with her work I I am familiar with the type of glass she used and she used a lot of Czech a lot of Venetian glass and Japanese glass which I do um, recognize these are Japanese she would buy from a group of makers they called themselves the cherry brand and I also have a video about Japanese glass beads and I go over that and she used these dimpled glass beads a lot in her work so it's interesting there's a mix of Japanese and Venetian glass and I love this <laughs> it is so beautiful so I don't know that I'm gonna let go of it anytime soon and then I also found this gorgeous melon shaped glass beads and these are also scent glass these are Czech made art deco era and look at the colors they are all hand knotted I don't know if they've been restrung and re-knotted because the thread um, is waxed and I don't believe that's how they were strung. Normally you just find cotton or silk. You don't really see waxed thread. So just look at these colors. So there's like a periwinkle blue. Then you have this very transparent red and then when it goes over the blue very thinly, it gives this this pink, like sherbet color. I just, oh, these are so beautiful. I've not seen anything like this. It's almost like jam or sherbet. It, it looks like candy to me. They look really yummy. Just really beautiful. Now I also found these and they also have the same shaped melon shaped beads. These are also check. Then you have this custard glass and some of you may already know about the secret this this necklace has and I'll show you in a second um, we have these interesting colored spacer bees like a custard color then we have these really cool Egyptian hieroglyphic beads here then there's two beads with 
maybe a pharaoh, some Egyptian figure's face, and it's double-sided. This one has a chip here. Several of them had chips, though. Really interesting, and almost all these bees are actually uranium. So I'm going to turn the light down. Just got a UV black light. And these melon beads just shine so bright. And then these Egyptian beads do actually glow green a little bit. And then these spacer beads do not. They actually turn a darker color. Very interesting. So, not sure what what those are. Maybe you guys know. I've not come across that where a lighter color bead turns darker. Oh, and I forgot to mention that these are actually Niger Brother beads. Um, I have another necklace. I actually got the beads loose. Thankfully, they were all there. I still have not restrung it because I'm trying to find the right clasp, the right findings for it. I want to make sure to do it justice, use era appropriate findings, and um, like these. I think this clasp is newer. Um, there should have been at least a brass clasp or no clasp at all. Just, you know, a single strand. So that's another exciting find. And now that moves on from just my recent finds. And I'm going to show some of the things that I've made recently. Really haven't been super motivated. I, I've just been so, so busy. You know how life gets. <laughs> so I have this kind of a, a assembled, kind of mismatched necklace here. I showed my husband this necklace and he was like, okay, these beads don't match and these don't match. And I was like, yeah, well, that's the look I'm going for. <laughs> So I kind of like things that don't exactly match. So I have this broken, beautiful rhinestone butterfly brooch. Well, it, it's broken off in the back there. I attach these lovely carnelian beads and I used a rosary style, you know, link chain. So I took eye, eye pins and put these beads on here. This is a really cool, um, really old molded glass, I guess, um, some kind of buckle. I'm not sure what it would have, would have been on. It would also have been really cool on like a velvet choker, just like slide it on. Um, thought that was really neat. Uh, I got this really neat Japanese art glass bead, some opalescent dimpled beads. I don't think these are that old, but I really like opal glass. Some more carnelian, some agate. Got an old iridescent button and a glass. I believe this is check glass ring. Of course, I try to leave my little hang tags on all my creations. I always love it when I find jewelry and I can at least get an idea of who made it. So this one I really, really love. It's really sweet. And then we've got this, another rosary style necklace. I use these really interesting, colorful, speckled. They reminded me of little, you know, bird eggs, Easter eggs. 
all kind of colors in there. Red, blue, green, yellow. These are Japanese glass beads. Come down here, I added little check flowers. We have a extender chain. Just something really sweet and simple. Um, I was very spring inspired with these two. And then this is something really different. Well, maybe not that different, but uh, sorry if you're not into spiders, but I love insects, bugs, really love butterflies and moths. Um, I just took some uh, glass, these are all glass, not crystal, new, newer glass beads, and just wanted to do something fun. I had stumbled upon a DIY about how to make beaded spiders and they're really popular like Christmas craft you make ornaments hang them on the tree and there's a whole story behind them I won't go into that but there's a ton of videos going over these beaded spiders and I wanted to do something a little different add some old buttons and um, I made this one more flat so it could you know my mom actually saw this. I don't know why. I, she doesn't really like bugs, but she really wants this. And she wanted me to add a pin to the back and wear it like a brooch. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. So yeah, I just thought I'd share that. It was just something fun to make. So yeah, um, these two necklaces are available. They're not in my Etsy shop yet, but if you want to message me we can work out a price um, I've done that in the past for other people um, who you know wanted to buy my work but bought directly from me and not through my Etsy shop my Etsy shop takes out a lot more fees than if you you bought directly from me if you're interested no no pressure but I really really appreciate you guys um, for hanging out, seeing my new finds, and checking out my new creations. I really, really love interacting with you guys, hearing your guys' comments. Um, you guys really make my day and really encourage me to just keep going. A lot of you have really inspired me and just been super sweet. I've gotten emails. I've gotten friend mail just over over time that I've had this channel and I just really appreciate each and every one of you who take the time. Um, I could never thank you guys enough. <laughs> I just I hope it comes across you know that very appreciative and genuine. So thank you again and if you haven't yet please subscribe to my channel. I've noticed a lot of people, most of my viewers are not subscribed, which, you know, is fine. You just browse and watch a video, but it would really help out my channel, um, help it grow if you guys could subscribe. And that also um, leads me to say that I am so close to a thousand subscribers and when I reach that I, I want to do another giveaway and I made a piece with vintage glass um, vintage findings as my last giveaway and everyone loved it I was so appreciative of that and I want to do that again I think you guys would love it so I'm in the process of planning, um, planning on making a piece for that, and I hope we'll reach that soon. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe and also like this video if you enjoyed this, and I will see you guys soon.